Hi, and good evening. I'd like to call to order the Finance Committee this evening, uh, May 22nd, 2023. Could I have a roll call, please? Chairperson Palafis. Present. Vice Chairperson Newell. Present. Trustee Mills. Present. Trustee Stanton. Present. Trustee Arnett. Present. Mayor McLeod. Present. And thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, could I entertain a motion and a second for the approval of minutes from April 24th meeting, 2023? So moved. Second. second. A motion and a second. Any comments, questions? All in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I have the motion to approve the meeting minutes are approved. Uh, at this time, we open the floor for public comments. Anybody have public comments outside of the agenda? Having none, we'll roll in the new business. We have three items. The first is a request approval of an ordinance to amend the 2022 budget as a result of the completed financial audit and to close out the fiscal year. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, Rachel, you want to give us uh, an update? Sure. So as you're aware, throughout the year, um, issues come up, items come up, projects that were unforeseen as part of the budget process or costs that are exceeding um, budget for various reasons. So we have to do an ordinance at the end of each year to bring things into line, um, and it's required to close out the year. This final budget adjustment is to make changes to our fiscal year 2022 budget. Um, this year, it was a typical number of adjustments, uh, nothing that was surprising to us, and nothing that was out of the ordinary. So I'd be more than happy to answer any questions about any specific adjustments, if there are any. Anyone from the committee have any questions for Rachel and her team? Having none, we have a motion and a second. Um, <laughs> I was going to do a roll call vote. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, item number two, it's a request authorization to award a contract for the Now Arena concourse wall painting to BP&T Construction Mount Prospect, Illinois, in an amount not to exceed $55,800. So moved. Sorry. Sorry. A motion and a second. Any uh, questions or comments for Dan, who's pinch hitting? <laughs> What's this about, Dan, just for the record? Yeah, yeah. So as you know, there's three major um capital projects that we're doing this year for the now arena two of them we talked about last meeting and uh, this is the third in the trilogy of um, capital projects um, you know that the arena uh, was, bo uh, was born was uh, <laughs> constructed in 2006 um, and it's uh, 17 years old uh, there hasn't been a complete painting of the concourse walls in that time period and um, the walls now are starting to show their age Mm. Um, so we're looking to a, uh, do a complete uh, painting of the concourse walls. Uh, bids were opened on May 9th, and you can see the bid tabulation uh, attached to your packets. Um, BP&T construction was the low bid at $55,800. Um, we checked the references. The references are all good. In fact, they've done a number of municipal clients, um, one of them our own park district, um, mm. and uh, everything was positive with them. Um, based off of that, uh, staff is recommending that um, there be a war of contract to BP&T construction. Fantastic. Like any 17-year-old building, it needs some touching up. Any questions or comments based on Dan's fabulous description? Having none, uh, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The motion carries. Item number three. Is a request authorization to renew the community development annual subscription agreement between Superion LLC, a central square technology company, and the Village of Hoffman Estates for a term of one year at a subscription cost of $48,070.98. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Derek, you want to give us some context? Uh, sure, of course. Um, so what is before you is the annual maintenance fee for the Central Square's community development product. Uh, this this system has been uh, finally implemented earlier this year, uh, and it essentially supports the core business needs for planning, development services, and code enforcement divisions. It also provides a online portal for uh, residents to connect with our staff uh, and provides a fluid and, uh, and seamless communication around the core business, those particular core business needs. Um, this uh, system was implemented, but it was delayed on, and to do a number of different reasons. So this, what's before you is the maintenance for the current year as we working with Central Square. On, uh, we're disputing some of the past charges uh, due to the, uh, to the 
delayed implementation of the system. All right, any questions, comments? Having none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? I have the motion carries. Moving on to reports for information only. The first is the Finance Department monthly report. Any questions or comments for Rachel? Anything additional to that? Thanks for wrapping up the 2022 year. It was awesome. Um, next is the Information Technology Department monthly report. Uh, Derek, anything more to add? Any questions or comments about IT? All right, having none, uh, we'll move on to the Now Arena monthly report. <clears throat> any questions, comments? Dan, any updates you want to elaborate on? Uh, the uh, the brew garden is open. <laughs> yeah, it is. Seventh Heaven, Saturday night. Seventh Heaven, Saturday night. Tons of graduations. I made the mistake of going to one of the restaurants out there last night. <laughs> bad call. <laughs> really bad call. Um, all right, having that, those will all be received and filed. Uh, President's report, Mayor? Yeah, the village family is mourning the passing of uh, Trustee Michael Gaeta, who has served with distinction for 10 years on the village board. He also served as a co-chair of the um, Village Green Ad Hoc Committee, which we're doing improvements there. He was a village rep to the O'Hara Noise Compatibility Commission, was a member of the Village Commission for Senior Citizens, and chairman of our Public Health and Safety Committee. He served for over five years on the Zoning Board of Appeals and then joined the Combined uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. He was Lieutenant Colonel in the Civil Air Patrol. He just loved people, and he loved serving people, and um, he will be sorely missed. Um, I've enjoyed my time on the Village Board immensely, and um, I think Michael even enjoyed it, enjoys it more than I did, uh, which is hard to believe because... But he just loved it. He was very positive, very upbeat. Um, in the course of a campaign, most of us get grumpy. Michael never got grumpy. He just loved meeting people. He loved going to door to door. He loved going to all the events in the village and serving on the various commissions and his outside uh, duties representing the village. And uh, I express my greatest uh, sympathy to his wife, Johanna, his children, his grandchildren, and his great grandchildren. Um, Mike and Johanna have been married for over 60 years and it's just hard to it's hard to wrap my hands around with the leave of the chair um, it's your call do you think everybody else would be allowed the floor to make some comments sure sure and anybody else want to make some comments Karen or not oh thanks um Get him talking about flying. You're his friend for life. Mm -hmm. um, hot dogs and popcorn. Anytime you go to a block party, if there's hot dogs, any event, hot dogs, he's right up in front of the line. Always had to be hot, though. If it was cold, he wouldn't have it. <laughs> um, he was just an all-around great person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Trusty Stan? Oh, Mike was a wonderful man. He shared a lot of stories with me about uh, life and how he met Johanna and uh, the Army. Um, yeah, and hot dogs were always a, a special favorite, as <laughs> as they were for our mayor as well. <laughs> that they shared in common. Yeah, uh, yeah, he'll be sorely missed. Trusty Mills. Well, having campaigned with Mike and done several things with him, and he and his wife, and would join us the last couple of years for Thanksgiving, out of town. We were both out of town, so we met up. And we just had a wonderful time. We, were, we planned on doing it annually, but unfortunately now we uh, had an end to that. And we'll miss the hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. That was always his greeting when he'd come in to, to the Hopton meetings. Um, he was a great man. And if Johanna's watching, our, our hearts go out to you so much. We's going to be sorely missed. Mm. Thanks. Corporation Council, Art, do you want to add anything? Uh, just that Mike and Joanna were, were um, very good friends to all of us. Mm -hmm. They were loving people. They were family people. They were community people. Um, and they were always a joy to be around. And um, 
They're going to be sorely, or Mike's going to be uh, sorely missed. Thanks, Art. Dan? The one thing about Trustee Gitt is he was always so positive, and um, he was very supportive of staff. Um, and that was obvious by, uh, at his committee meetings, he would always read letters of um, <laughs> what happened in police or fire out in the community. Yeah. And you could tell he was extremely proud of our public service. Jen, get out of here. I know. Thank you. Um, it's such an honor to serve um, Trustee Gator over the almost 10 years that I've, I've been here. Um, and to say hello, hello, hello. <laughs> That was wonderful. He, I always will remember that. And he also taught me four to one as far as the hot dogs go. <laughs> so it had to be four to one. I know Yusuf, if you're watching this, you'll appreciate that. But um, he was so wonderful and just so positive, like everyone said. So yeah. he'll be missed. Yeah. Thanks. Anna? Okay. Um, Hopefully I'll say this right, but it was a real pleasure to know the both of them, but especially Mike. Um, I know you guys and everybody else have got their own stories, but I couldn't even say his name in my house because my dog, for those that know, I have a Shetland sheepdog. Her name is Sasha. If I would say Gata, she would go bonkers and fly out the door thinking that she's going to his house uh would walk around the neighborhood there's nobody that doesn't know him and she would run up his driveway and drag me into the house and then i'd say hi guys we're here again <laughs> you know so and, and he was always so happy to see us you know he would be happy you know he'd stand on his porch and wave to all the neighbors he was just a great guy all over you know mm. And I gotta stop there because then you're gonna have to get me the tissue box. So, yeah, yeah. thank you. But condolences to the family and everyone because we're all gonna miss them. I don't know what else I can add that y'all haven't said other than uh, we share the passion of piloting. We're both veterans, and Matt, yeah, I see a group of our firefighters here, and uh, he loved you guys so much, you guys and gals, and the, and the police just through and through. He loved those letters, running into you anywhere was you know not just a simple hello it was a 10 minute conversation um but that was for all of our staff uh anybody else the, the floor is open if you want to come up say anything no pressure um but uh yeah it's great to remember him you know he's uh the rare is it in a lifetime where somebody moves me so much uh, michael is just one of those almost supernatural forces that you run into that uh just was able to you know, stabilize anything, and uh, it's a good man. Leaves a hole in my heart. Uh, my heart goes out to Johanna and the family, um, and it'll be good to see them celebrate his life in the upcoming days. So with that then... Um, Still got more on President's report. Oh, that's right. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, Monday, the 29th, we'll have a Memorial Day service at our police building at 411 West Higgins at 10 a.m. And then we do a joint celebration with Schomburg at St. Peter's Lutheran Church. That will follow shortly after our uh, event. I also want to wish my wife, Joni, happy birthday a week from, to a week from today, May 29th. Oh. Happy birthday. This past week... Um, just participate in the environmental committee meeting of the Metro Mayor's Caucus and Wednesday the Northwest Missile Conference Legislative Committee meeting and then um, our PACE board meeting following that. Um, and then Wednesday night we had Wine Wednesday. On Thursday, Joni and I went down to outside Memphis, Tennessee to visit uh, our daughter and her husband and our grandson, Aiden, who... Uh, attends the School of Rock, and uh, they had a heavy metal night, and he was really good. He plays the keyboard and the organ. It was, it was really a fun time. I want to thank um, everybody who went to shop, shop, you know, cool cop on a rooftop, and the uh, kids at Parks Day at Fabrini Park. Thank you for going and covering that for, for me. And tonight we had a little reception for 
some outstanding members of the uh, Asian American Pacific Islander community, which we all participated in, and um, that's all I got. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have nothing and other, um, no items in review, and I'll entertain a motion, a second to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. We're adjourned. Okay, I'd like to call the Public Work and Utility Committee to order on this May 22nd, 2023. May I have a roll call, please? Chairperson Newell? Present. Trustee Palafis? Present. Trustee Mills? Present. Trustee Stanton? Present. Trustee Arnett? Present. Mayor McLeod? Present. Okay, well, uh, counted for and we have a quorum. Uh, the next item is the approval of minutes from April 24th, 2023. So moved. Second. A motion is second. Uh, any corrections, deletions? Seeing none, we have a motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No nays. Motion passed. Public comment. Does anyone have anything to say for this committee? If not, we will move on to new business. We have three items. First one is request authorization to waive bidding and renew a contract for 2023 and 2024 sanitary and storm sewer televising and evaluation with American Underground Inc., which is out of Glenview, Illinois, in an amount not to exceed $160,000. So moved. A second. Um, okay, Joe. Uh, this item is for our annual uh, sewer televising service uh, for years 23 and 2024. Uh, we perform uh, sewer televising to assess the condition of our underground utilities uh, prior to we do, prior to our road uh, construction program. And also we're required to uh, televise at least 2% of our system annually uh, per the MWRD, which is about 21,000 feet. So it is a requirement that we do do the televising um, and inspection of a certain amount of our system. Uh, we've been using uh, uh, MPI, which is a purchasing consortium um, run by a number of municip municipalities in the northern suburbs. Uh, we've been piggybacking on their low bid amount for, for a number of years. So we'd like to continue that. Um, they are, um, they're honoring their 2022 price and not raising it um, for the next two years. So yeah. um, we're hoping to be able to tack on to that. That's excellent. Okay, any questions up here, Mayor? Yeah, just for the record, you're asking to, to waive bidding and renew the contract. Uh, can you just explain why for the public record? Well, the, the, the work was bid out. Um, MPI, which is a purchasing consortium, uh, bid the work out, and American Underground was the low bidder chosen at that time. Um, that three-year contract included two one-year extensions, um, the Village of Glenview's decided not to go out and bid since uh, American Underground was going to honor their 2022 price. So um, MPI is not rebidding it, and they're they're taking the 2022 price for the next two years. Uh, we felt that was a good deal given um, inflation and how pricing has gone for uh, most everything that we purchased in the last year or two, and wanted to piggyback onto that decision as well. Okay. If nothing else. Uh, Trustee Stan. Maybe the other bid should be just mentioned. American Underground was, I think, a unit price of one eighty seven, whereas National Power Rotting was four dollars. Sheridan Plumbing was two dollars and sixty seven cents, and Visu Sewer was two dollars and thirteen cents. So this is the low bid. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No nays. Motion passed. Mm -hmm. Item number two, request authorization to award a contract for a village-wide water distribution system leak survey to Emmy Simpson Company, which is out of Valparaiso, Indiana, in an amount not to exceed $60,000. So moved. Second. Joe? Uh, the second item uh, tonight, uh, we're requesting to award contract to Emmy Simpson uh, for a system-wide leak detection. Uh, we first did a system-wide leak detection in 2014, and since then we've been doing a portion of the village each year. 
uh, normally in conjunction with our valve exercising. So they would come into town, exercise a number of our valves, about a fifth of the valves that we had in the village. And while they were on that valve, they would be listening for leaks and then report those to us. Um, we did do a, a more extensive uh, leak detection uh, in 2018. We were actually able to do uh, southern Hoffman Estates and northern Hoffman Estates. We didn't do western Hoffman Estates due to the age of the infrastructure. Uh, we felt the money was best spent in south Hoffman and north Hoffman uh, at that time. Uh, this time we're looking to go back and do another full system one where we'll include all, all, um, all the entire distribution system of the village. Uh, and hopefully um, find some leaks that we can fix. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No nays, motion passed. Item number three, request authorization to waive bidding and purchase A, two Ford F-250 pickup trucks from Friendly Ford, which is out of Roselle, Illinois, in an amount not to exceed $99,200, B, two Ford Explorer Interceptors and one Ford 150 pickup truck from Curry Motors, which is out of Frankfurt, Illinois, in an amount not to exceed $124,560. And C, two Ford Explorer Interceptors from Welch Ford, which is out of Hardyville, South Carolina, in an amount not to exceed $93,080. So moved. I'll second. Okay. Uh, this request formalizes the emergency authorization that um, uh, <clears throat> Manager Palm was given to purchase vehicles when we were able to find them uh, with the dealers. So um, we've taken possession already of six out of the seven. The two from South Carolina showed up today. So yes. um, we're waiting for one more from Curry Motors and hopefully we'll get that in and get it upfitted and get it out to, uh, to be in service. Okay. Ch um, Mayor? Yeah, do we... Have any theory of when we maybe actually go out and bid this stuff again instead of scrounging throughout the entire country trying to pick up cars and trucks? Yeah. Uh, Joe Capaga, our uh, fleet supervisor, uh, we met with him recently to find out if, if there's been any movement at all with Ford and, and a lot of the other major manufacturers when it comes to government fleets, and there really hasn't been. Um, even these the, the, the vehicles that we just purchased were originally ordered in 2022, uh, put on a list and it's just it's just sitting there static. Um, they are selling um, some trucks to retail, but government fleet, I think they make less per vehicle selling to government fleet. So um, I don't necessarily think that's Ford's priority right now. So um, we're kind of in limbo and you know as, as that situation improves, we'll uh, we'll provide updates. Yeah, I think we need to emphasize the difficulty of getting these things because we're waiving bidding on all kinds of stuff and just for the record, it's nice to have it recorded. The record never forgets. Thanks. Trusty Stan. How did the vehicles get delivered from South Carolina? Uh, they were shipped up on a truck, back of a truck, flatbed. Okay. At our expense or the dealer's expense? We paid extra for that. It was, I think it was, I don't know if it was... 700 or 800 dollars a vehicle but i can find that out and get that number to you okay thank you trustee mills did you have a question no, that's okay oh, okay anyone else all right seeing none we have a motion and a second all in favor aye, aye. 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 Nay's motion passed uh, the next is reports for information only the first one is the department of public works monthly report do we have anything to add? Uh, just real quickly, we did um, add a right-of-way permit tracking um, sheet uh, in our monthly report. Um, it shows uh, what utilities are doing work and where in the village in a brief description of that. Um, I received some feedback from Trustee Newell saying that that was helpful as you guys are running into uh, residents and constituents around the village. They ask, what's going on here? What's going on in my backyard? So um, we are not, we don't have the format down 100% yet, but we figured we'd get something in there um, moving forward. So you guys can consult that if, if you hear of utility work that's happening. Um, otherwise, you're free to email us at any time and we'll get back to you. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I, I thought that was nice, uh, especially the part with the comment updates because you see the trucks out there. So that that is helpful. Um, so thank you for that. And then uh, your report format is looking pretty good. It's different and a little bit easier, cleaner to read. We shortened it up. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. 
So thank All you that. for that. Okay, so we will uh, receive and file that. Then the next one was the engineering division monthly report. Do we have but nothing to add. add to nothing to add. Okay, thank you. We will receive and file that. And Mr. President, do you have anything else you would like no, to add? No, nothing else. Okay, so nothing else to add. Nothing under other or items in review. Um, the only thing I just wanted to mention that we did get some nice letters to Public Works about uh, the action on down trees on Audubon. And also um, there was uh, about the road construction on Dixon. So there was um, letters from our residents saying thank you for your fast and um, action of taking care of everything there. So I just wanted to mention that. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No nays. Uh, motion passed and we are adjourned. <clears throat> Like to uh, call to order the Public Health and Safety Committee meeting uh, tonight, May twenty second, twenty twenty three. Could I have a roll call, please? Vice Chairman Palafas. Present. Trustee Newell. Present. Trustee Mills. Present. Trustee Stanton. Present. Trustee Arnott. Present. Mayor McLeod. Present. And we have a quorum. Uh, entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes from the meeting on April twenty fourth, twenty twenty three. So moved. Second. A motion a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the motion, say no by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have a motion carries. Uh, any public <coughs> comments from anybody? Having that, uh, under new business, we have one and only one item, which is the fire station feasibility and space needs study discussion. So, Chief, over to you. Thank you, Trustee Philosophers. Before we start, I just want to also add uh, our acknowledgement on behalf of the police department and Chief Colley as well as the fire department, our acknowledgement of what a huge loss uh, the passing of Trustee Gata is. He was always extremely supportive of us. He was at all of our public events. He was a member of the liaison to our Board of Police and Fire Commissioners uh, and our biggest cheerleader. Um, it is a huge loss, not only in terms of professionally, but uh, we've lost a friend to all of us. So we, uh, we will definitely miss him and we certainly send our prayers to the entire Gata family, Johanna and the rest of the family. Thanks, Chief. Okay, so we are here to talk about the fire station study. Um, I just wanna make sure that it's up, so it's good. Uh, as you know, the, we've been working on the study for over a year. Uh, we have partnered with our consultants, FGM Ar Architects, uh, to do the study. Uh, we have representing FGM here today, uh, Andy Jasek, who's our Executive Vice President, Managing Partner, uh, Managing Director and, on the Board of Directors, and he was the Project Manager of this um, project. So Andy's here in case you should have any questions. We also have uh, the Village's Facilities Manager, Paul Pacheco's here. Um, so in case you have any questions, we can do that. So as you can see, FGM was our primary consultant. Um, they did uh, the, all the things related to the station, the, the facilities analysis, the space needs analysis, and they contract and they they have their specialties that they contracted with. But they also contracted with the Illinois Fire Chiefs Association Consulting Service to do all of the GIS related stuff, the station location related things, and uh, that was the focus of the report, uh, the producer of the report. So the focus of the study was to review the current station locations within the community, review the current conditions of and the spaces within stations 21 and 22. We recognize that those are the two stations that were uh, in need of the most uh, evaluation and they, as they are the oldest. And we all, the focus also was to recommend facility and space needs, locations and infrastructure taking several things into the consideration, which you can see there, the response trends, planned and potential village growth, some code requirements, as well as what's the best practices in, in our industry. So um, we just wanna identify that there's really two big main elements to the study. One is the station location analysis, and the other is the space needs and the current facility conditions analysis. And then there's two parts to the report that you have 
Um, the main report with the executive summary has the overview, station conditions and needs, and recommendations. And then there's the addendum, which uh, is the detailed station location analysis. And like I said, it's in detail, so it's pretty, pretty involved. Uh, altogether, we're, it's over 204 pages of analysis to help us with uh, our evaluations. So we'll start with first with the station location analysis. Uh, just a couple of definitions to get us started. TRA is the total response area of the Hoffman Estates Fire Department. And we recognize those are areas that we are responsible for. That includes the highway, since we have responsibilities, the, the fire protection district. Uh, which is a very small, very small part of our response area. Another definition is the drive time, which is the travel time to an emergency from the vehicle going in route from the fire station or wherever they're located until arrival on the scene. And then here's one that you may not have heard before. Uh, it's catchment and specifically four minute catchment. And that's basically the area that can be reached from one or more of our specific fire stations within a four minute drive time. It's calculated based on the speed limits along the most direct route from the fire station to the scene. And four minutes is the desired travel time based on recommendation and standards that are listed in, in the report. And it's uh, several organizations that established those kind of standards. So here we have uh, just kind of a basic start and an outline uh, to explain the study. Um, you could see some of our demographics. You could see that there was 20, almost 21,000 calls that were analyzed by the consultant between 2019 and halfway through 2022. Um, of those 20,700 calls, uh, just over 19,000 of them were within our, our community and our borders, and the remainder were mutual aid we gave to the others. So we really, of course, for, for locating our stations, we looked at the 19,000 calls um, that were within our community. And really, station locations are typically analyzed in, in three ways, uh, which is what the consultant did. Um, the most relevant is how many incidents are within those four-minute catchments of actual incidents within that three and a half years that were evaluated. And it's most relevant because those are the calls we're going on. Uh, the other way was, which is less relevant is the percentage of road miles within the four minute catchment. Um, it's less relevant because as many road miles have low incident counts, and of course, many road miles are on the tollway, which certainly we're not gonna locate a station to cover a tollway by contract. Mm. Um, and the percentage of, and then the third method is the percentage of the area and square miles within the four minute catchment. That's the least relevant because we recognize we have a lot of forest preserve areas and other areas that have low incident volumes. Uh, so again, the, the, the biggest one that we look at, in, in, and I will tell you all three basically told us the same thing related to locations, but the one that's most relevant to us is the first one, the number of incidents, and you'll see that again. So uh, the, consultants, the consultant basically uh, operated by taking out the fire stations we have now, and they basically analyzed 640 sites. They just took the entire district, the entire town, the entire response area, and, and put every so many feet they put another potential site, and then they did the evaluation of what the response times would be to those sites from all of our stations. Um, so the results, as you can see there, those are our current fire station locations. Um, really, uh, and then you can see that the ideal locations uh, are basically pretty much where, where our current locations are located. Um, so some of the recommendations that came out of the station location analysis is that our f current four station locations are geographically located in excellent locations based on the performance or historically, uh, projected performance and current and projected community development. The consultant did work with our community development department to, to identify what are the uh, for sure coming uh, developments and which ones are likely to be coming in the future. Um, it further indicates that relocating stations 21, 22, 23, and 24 to the ideal locations will not realize enough improvement in incidents covered and response times to support and justify the financial impact of relocation. Um, we do note that the consultant does provide ideal locations for new and relocated stations from the current locations, 
but they would result in only a 1% increase in the number of calls with a four minute drive time catchment um, than we currently experience. But it also noted <laughs> that when you add in the most likely and, and for sure happening future developments, then the percentage remains unchanged from our current percentages from our current locations. Hey, Chief, <clears throat> yep. I ask you a data question. The 84%, does that filter out the calls on the tollway? Or because that could have a drag on the data if it was included, right? It could, it could. But they basically looked at all of the calls within the district, including that one. So that's, that is definitely the case. I'd be curious to see what the number would be if you filtered it out. Just you know. we can we can see to yeah. seek to get that for you. I mean, because like you said, we're not going to build one specifically for the tollway or the proximity, even though twenty two is pretty close. Um, aside from a couple left turns, I only think about it because as I was on my way here, there were four of our trucks cruising through the intersection as I was waiting for the light. Um, but I was just curious, you know, what impact that had on the data. It definitely does, but our call, compared to the others, our calls on the tollway are not that great in numbers to, mm -hmm. to change the percentages all that much. Right. Uh, compared to the 19,000 calls, not that huge of a percentage. Are on so the you think there would be a washing effect of the few calls we get on the tollway that might take a few minutes longer to get to? Well, depending on where they're located, because certainly there's areas in the tollway where we're with, we are within the four-minute catchment. Yeah, sure. So Okay. So basically, in other words, um, the study validates the existing locations for stations 21 and 22. So the next part of the analysis of the, of the study uh, were the space needs uh, for the department and, the, and for the stations and the current conditions of the fire stations, specifically stations 21 and 22. And just to give you an idea of what they were looking at, the space needs were based on department operations, industry standards, code requirements, and the consultant's past project experience with many, many fire station projects. In terms of the current conditions, the, the facility conditions were evaluated by the consultant's experts along with subcontracted stru structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection engineers. So regarding the space needs and the conditions analysis, the results to summarize are that the space needs for both stations 21 and 22 are significantly more, the needs are more than the existing spaces in the stations provide. And you can see what those square footages are there. Mm -hmm. In addition to the size of the stations, the existing conditions of each building requires significant investment to minimally meet modern safety standards and code compliancy in their current spaces. The following costs you see below are the estimated cost, and I'll note that it's, these are 2024 costs because in the next slide we'll see 2025 costs for rebuilding. The following are estimated costs in 2024, uh, excluding the temporary housing costs should we re be rebuilding on site, or I'm sorry, should we be refurbishing, we would have to move out and find a temporary location. Um, so these are the costs estimated, but we note that they will not correct any of the space needs problems or any of the operational deficiencies. <coughs> and you see what those dollars are there. Again, estimates for 2024. <laughs> Implementing these refurbishments are expected to extend the building's life stands by maybe another 15 to 20 years. But again, they will not correct any space or operational deficiencies that were noted. So the cost to demolish the current stations and build new facilities, and again, this excludes land acquisition, temporary housing. Um, if, the, if there was a decision to try to put a multi-story uh, facility at Station 22, there's, there would be additional costs for stairs, elevators, things like that, although the, the consultant even recommends that there's just not enough space on 22's land to be able to do that. Uh, but you can see the cost there for Fire Station 21. Again, estimated uh, costs are for 2025 construction. Uh, that was estimated at about 4% more than 2024, but we feel, uh, realistically speaking, to get it done in 2024 is probably not realistic. And you can see the cost, estimated cost for Fire Station 22. With a total combined estimated cost, there you see. So 
Again, we have the two sides. We have the location analysis. We have the station uh, conditions and needs analysis. And when combining the two, the recommendation by the consultant is that they basically station 21. Again, the report recommends the parking lot, either, either the parking lot of the police station or where station 21 is currently located. But we recognize there are several challenges that make the police station troublesome. So building a new station 21 at its current location or somewhere else at the village owned Chino Park is recommended. We know that the station currently is adjacent to Chino Park and that would be able to allow us to live in the current facility while the new one was being built and maintain the same service. Station 22, the recommendation is to build a new station 22 within the identified ideal station location area which is the little circle that they showed uh, very near to where it's currently located. The current location is within that area. However, the current site is not large enough to accommodate the needed spaces. As we said, even a multi-level structure cannot adequately accommodate the needed space. So the village would need to identify a new location. So next steps. Basically at this point, the staff is just seeking direction to prepare a plan to include project timing and financing based on feedback from the board that you may wish to give this evening or at a subsequent meeting. Recognizing the, the, the really questions are related to fire station 21 and 22. Do we refurbish, do we rebuild, or do we maintain the status quo? And I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Again, we have our consultant with us. Chief, it seems like uh, if we build a new 21, we already own the property. That could go fast. Whereas 22, it's likely we have to do land acquisition, demo, wherever we buy the land. I mean, there's been some ideas kicked around. Could we do 21? And uh, as we're doing 21, pursue 22 in parallel? We could absolutely. We could choose to do one station first and then the other station. We can choose to mix and match any of the options here in terms of refurbishing versus building. We can do both at the same time, which we recognize will grant us some economies of scale and cost savings mm. by, by doing it in an earlier year. Um, so all those are on the table. All of those are available to us. And of course, um, you know, we would have to have discussions related to financing as well. I think from my perspective, status quo is not an option and refurbishing just kicks it down the road. So a rebuild seems appropriate. Um, I just, I can't help but think that, and I, I like the idea of doing them in parallel, but logically we could have 21 done almost a year before we even start 22. So I would hate to see 21 lag, you know, if we're trying to do them in parallel, maybe, maybe we can, I don't know, do some creative with financing or purchasing or, you know, pull one bond versus two. I don't know the mechanics of that. And I'm sure you guys can research that further and come back. But those are just the, the things that uh, I, I share from my perspective. But anybody from the rest of the committee, floor is open, Mayor? Yeah, I'd like to see what Rachel thinks. I was going to do that. But, okay. yeah. <laughs> You're a guru. You're the finance guru. So what are the finance mechanics? Is that what Put you're me asking? on the spot with all these firefighters here. <laughs> <laughs> they so have all the trust in the world in you. From a, from a current bond funding status, our current bonds are going to stay at the level they're at until about 2030. Mm -hmm. That's the first time we're going to start seeing a decline. Um, and so if we were going to move forward with any kind of financing right now, we would have to have new funding brought to the table, um, whether that be um, property tax levy, whether that be, we all know that we're going to be having an increase in our electric utility tax potentially from some of the development that's occurring in the village. So that could be a revenue source that's on the table. Um, we have other new revenues that are coming in. And so I think there's definitely some options out there that we can look at to potentially contribute to the funding that's going to be needed for a new bond issue. So Rachel, if I had to characterize that in a different way, what you're saying is when we pull a new bond, we have to 
apply a new revenue source to it. It's definitely going to be a new revenue yeah. source that's going to have to come into play. Right. Okay. Mayor, were you done? Is that good? Yeah. Uh, Trustee Stan? Do we have enough money in the general fund to do one of these now without taking out a bond? <laughs> So we're in a comfortable financial position right now, um, especially since you are all aware that we have been putting some money aside for capital over the past couple of years. Um, so between that and the position we're in at the end of fiscal year 22, which I'll be reporting on in about a month, um, we are in a comfortable position that we pot we could potentially have um, a good funding source for some of this work um, if you were going to move forward. Another question I have is, why does the uh, consultant feel that uh, we need more than double the space for the new fire stations or for the current fire stations? So these buildings are 50, 60 years old, and the fire service has just changed dramatically. And so, um, you know, the apparatus has gotten larger. Uh, there's a, <laughs> many more females. There's things that we need to do in locker rooms and bathrooms and such. And so this is what we're seeing in um, in all the trends. And so that's how we program these. And it just turns out that it's about double in both scenarios. When you say uh, fixing these up uh, for station 21 is two to three million and 22 is three and a half to four and a half million. Does that alleviate any of the issues that you uh, would have as far as the need for size? No, it, do, it doesn't. That's So what we try to do is compare the cost of just fixing what you have so that you can expand its lifespan, but nothing would change operationally. No additional storage. The bays wouldn't be larger to, to accommodate the vehicles better. There wouldn't be you know, male and female bathrooms and equal in, in all the facilities. So there still are a lot of uh, deficiencies by even spending that money. Take, for example, uh, Village of Schomburg. Are their buildings any different than ours currently? Considering I haven't been in their buildings in many years, I, I really couldn't comment on that. Well, based on what you did see years ago. <laughs> oh boy, He's going to make you answer. No, that was way too long ago. I, I, I wouldn't want to comment. I think as I look at Station 1 off of Roselle, I mean, anybody can weigh in on this. So we're just opinion. Um, it, it's pretty old and it, I mean, it's, it's bigger than ours, I think, but it's been there a while, right, Bill? Yeah, it was uh, built in the eighties. Um, yeah. we actually tried to get a bay in there back in the day and the board voted it down. I think it would have been, would have been good, but I couldn't get the four votes. Yeah. <laughs> How big is the square footage of 24 off of Gary's question? Um, Roughly, you can just guesstimate. Do you know? Or Paul, do you know? <laughs> I don't mean to put anybody on the spot. I just, yeah. 17? Yeah, 18 was the number I was going to. Okay. So. The problem with these fire stations is that you, it's not like on a school that I'm going to put on a new wing, I'm going to put four more classrooms and another set of bathrooms. Every room, in as we did our analysis, the bays need to add a bay, become bigger. The kitchen needs to be a little bit bigger. The dining room needs to be a little bit bigger. Every space, and, and they're lacking a lot of the, you know, um, current trends in, you know, carcinogens and, and mitigating, you know, um, those, those um, elements that when they come back, you know, decontamination, all of those spaces are either way undersized or missing. So how do you keep adding these spaces in a logical format, it's 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 almost impossible. So that's why when we saw the uh, the dramatic almost or more than double in size, it in our professional opinion to just start start again um, will will be the cleanest uh, process. Thank you. When I think of twenty four, <clears throat> I see the hazmat team out there, the dive team. It'd be great to have that stuff more central. My opinion. I have no professional backing again, of Again, anyone. operationally, because our storage and, and certain apparatus and equipment is located in one side of town, it does create some operational challenges that we've done our best to overcome, but it's definitely not efficient. 
I mean, I know you can get the team there in three to four minutes, but well, if it's one of those specialties, you know, it's kind of a haul. Even related to day-to-day -day storage of all of our equipment, it's stored up there. We have to figure out how to get it to the central so that the other station on the east side of town can, I mean, it's just a lot of that kind of stuff. So with the new proposed structures, will they have like what 24 has in terms of like the training rooms downstairs and the, the different meeting rooms and... Uh, I mean, 24, is that's not brand new either, right? I mean, it's... 2009. Yeah, right. I was right. going to say 12 years. I would have been pretty close. Um, yeah. So the, the, the space determination, space needs for 20, uh, Station 22 does include a classroom that's a little bigger than the current one. Currently, we have less seats than we have a full shift, so we end up bringing in extra chairs and stuff. Um, Station 21 would not have would have a small training area, but certainly not the size of 2020 uh, Station 24s. I mean, and the bond amount doesn't bother me. We pulled 28 million for the police station, however many years ago, right, Rachel? So I mean, I think 25 is a pretty good deal for two new fire stations. I'm kind of so I thought it would be more. So what Dan, when you said 25, I thought you were kidding. I thought it'd be more, um, but in, in the sense of the fact that. We're in such a, ground, uh, a strong financial position. I mean, you guys are the experts. I think you should just maybe go the next step and recommend what we do next. Anybody at Karen Mills? Yeah, first of all, you're saying to rebuild 21 first. But in looking through the, the inspections in that, it sounds like 22 is in a lot worse shape. I'll let you speak to that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yep, you read it right. So they're, they're both in fair to poor condition. Um, but yeah, 20, 22, um, they're, they're, it's single white walls. There's no insulation in that building. The windows, the roof, everything is, that's how they built that, them, yeah. you know, 60 years ago in the, in the 60s and in the early 70s. On this slide, we weren't necessarily saying in this order. We were just indicating, we did it in station number order. We, that would be part of the determination is what would be the priority if we had to only do one at a time. Mm -hmm. I think if your fire inspectors went through your stations, they closed <laughs> them down. Um, where would you relocate the, the, the stations while they're being rebuilt? Uh, well, we, that would be, have to be part of our analysis. I mean, in some places they find a, uh, a, a closed warehouse or a closed store. They put a, a butler building, a temporary shed building up. There are other places that, um, that do like a, a trailer uh, that, that gets brought in and then, uh, again, attach a butler building for the uh, vehicles. Uh, I know one of our neighbors uh, recently did it for eight months, and it was like two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. Another neighbor did it for a year and in in almost a, almost a year and a half, um, and it was like seven hundred thousand dollars added to the construction costs while they were constructing on the same site that the current station is. And you so. got to try and get the the uh, temporary location close to where the station is now because of response time. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Um, what else was I going to ask? Okay, I forgot what else I wanted to ask right now. <laughs> I'll I'll, you, I'll uh, come back to it. Manager O'Malley, you wanted to add something? The, the only thing, um, to, to your question, Trustee Stanton, um, when you look at when the stations were built in the 60s and 70s, um, look at what the size of the village was back then and how many firefighters we had back then, and then look at the growth that we've had and how the department has grown with that, still operating out of those same buildings. So I think that gives you a little bit of a better picture of what we're working out of now. And just in general, what, what we're really looking for tonight, um, and I'm, uh, I, I don't think I hear anyone saying, you know, stop, we don't wanna, we're gonna stay with the status quo for anything. We're just really looking for some direction to say, go ahead and um, put a plan together that has uh, financing to it, that has options. It may include refurbish one, rebuild one as one option, or rebuilding all of them, and what order. Um, so we're really looking for direction from you to say, yes, go ahead and put something more detailed together that you can all take a look at. It doesn't mean it's uh, uh, set in stone. You can change it as much as you want, but we just want to know whether it's okay for us to go ahead and put together all those options for you. I remembered. Okay, <laughs> sure. All right, we already own Chino Park, correct? Mm -hmm. 
Is there any ball games or anything going on still there? So there's no leagues or anything. Park the district leagues. doesn't really program it, even though we did that 99 mm-hmm. year lease or whatever. Um, I mean, the gardens are about the only thing. Only thing yeah. yeah. And just to clarify off of Karen's question, we don't have to knock down the current 21 to build the new 21. No. There's enough space there to put the new one up as the old one. That, that would it be the, again, given the cost of temporary housing, it would make sense to build the new facility and then move out of the old facility into the new facility and then decide what you want to do with the old one. I mean, you could, could become that, part of the park. Chino. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Chino Park. There. Yeah, you're right next door. Right. Again, we can give you those options mm-hmm. and, and lay, them, lay them out there. But um, having Chino right there makes 21 a, a lot easier to deal with um, yeah. versus when we look at 22. Yeah. Well, truthfully, I, I think we've got to do something. I mean, we can't continue okay. with the way these stations are. <laughs> and the more we put it off, the worse they're going to be. And I would be in favor of us putting together some type of a plan. It's my own opinion. I agree with that. Yeah, a twenty-two is more complicated because we got to acquire land, mm-hmm. and how long would that process take? Um, we don't know what's going to cost. We don't know where if twenty-one means just move it over. Mm-hmm. You can save the Butler Building expense, and you could get that one done. So we might like everybody to look at all the different options. So I think. Obviously, it'd be great to do 22 right away, too, but mm-hmm. I don't know if we can do that. Because what's, how much time is it going to take to do all this? Understood. Yeah. Trustee Stan? Uh, Art, do you have an opinion as to whether or not we can build on Chino with the lease with the Park District? Or how does that work? <laughs> um, I haven't researched it but it's my understanding that the village owns Chino right and because the village already owns it um there shouldn't be if that's the case there shouldn't be any uh we can uh, break a lease yeah the regular lease I mean we, we we own it we're the municipality we control the zoning okay. so I mean there shouldn't be any uh, prohibitions against building the only issues that do come up which is always the case when you engage in change, is that you know your local community, you, you know what their feelings are, but um, there's already a fire station there, so uh, hopefully that would not be a large challenge. Um, but I see no uh, problems regarding um, any type of uh, restrictions on the village for building on that property but that's with the caveat i haven't <laughs> read through everything well, that probably be what we'd have to do for the report is check that, that yeah I, I mean we, we'd have to look through you know we get we we do a title report look and see if there's any restrictions on the property um mm-hmm. you know that's something that uh, we would do and um usually there's different things the village can do. It takes a little time, a little effort, but um, I think it it would definitely be doable. And if there was something wrong, I think we could probably fix it. We would reach out to the park district right. just okay. to yeah. Look, yeah. You know, what our thoughts are and get their input. Well, I certainly don't want any kind of a lawsuit if possible. No. Yeah, absolutely. No. <laughs> Trusty Mills. Would it be feasible? And this is just some dumb thought of mine. If you did 21 first on the new land, and instead of tearing down the old station right away, use that as your temporary headquarters for 22? I know it's not as big, but... Well, and the other issue for that is the fact that it's so far out of the district. 2022, yeah. the center part of our town is 50% of our call volume. That's true. Yeah. So we would have some response issues there. Yeah, I, I was thinking of that, but I thought it might be something that could be now, looked into. It, it, yeah. I mean, there, there's some nuances there. I mean, potentially, if we could find a smaller, I mean, we have a lot of vehicles and a lot of people at Station 22. Yeah. I mean, if we, were, if we were able to maybe have less contingent in the center part of town and find a way to keep them in, t- in the center part of town and then use the old Station 21 for the balance, that's a possibility. Okay. So when I talked to 
the former chairman, when I was at his house a couple Saturdays ago, this will make you laugh. His comment to me was, we just need to go fast. <laughs> we need new buildings. We need to go fast. And so I, I think everybody can see that, you know, 23 is, I mean, other than the park, they're not going to sue us. The park, we have friends over there. And they understand, you know, the, the ramifications of this, I think. And they don't program the land anyway. I think it's a good option to go. It's just really, I think, what Rachel pulls together from the bond issue. Do we go for one big pile of money? Or if it, like the mayor said, if it takes us a while to acquire land, maybe it's two issuances. I don't know. Well, we're not, I thought at the last meeting, were we were not looking at the buildings in Barrington Square behind the bank. Yes. Yeah. That would be, that'd be a place to look at. Yeah. It's right there. It's just right. Of Higgins Road. You don't want to say that in public, though, because yeah. it'll drive up the property price. Right. right. So. You got to be careful with that. <laughs> okay. Just saying. But, uh, Trustee Newell. Okay. These are just thoughts. And I know we did 24, and then we did the police station as lead. Are there any thoughts about going lead for the new stations? You know, like with the water and the toilets and anything. We, we have not discussed that, but I would imagine that now there's a considerable cost addition to go leads if you want to speak yeah, to that. No, I, I don't have the figures, but it absolutely is more expensive. It is. Um, and of what we're finding is um, the lead program. I better watch what I say. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's just it, it's it's losing a little bit of its steam that it used yeah. to have. Okay. And there's a, a new program. Um, there, well, there's many programs that are out there, but there's one that we subscribe more to, and it's well building, and it's about the occupants, and it's about creating a healthy environment for them. And um, lead is just getting more and more expensive to do. Okay. Um, so we absolutely sustainable buildings. Are, are good buildings. So we believe as architects, we do our, our due diligence. We, we're going to give you a sustainable building, but you may just not get the plaque at the end. Right. right? I, I work, don't care about yeah. the plaque. I'm yeah, just we, about but, some right. of but the... We work with so many clients that are interested in being you know, healthy and sustainable, and we're, we can walk you through that and what the things that we're doing. The other things, what Lee did do, is it up the game with just ordinary codes? So just now, by following the code, you pretty much get a certified building okay. under the LEED um, scorecard. Okay. And what about EV? Uh, would there be any kind of charging stations? Are we going to have fire trucks that you got to plug in nowadays? I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking about the future. The Jetsons, tell you when you they know. did their space needs study, they did include space for uh, like a room to d be the EV management room. Um, we would anticipate that there would probably be uh, some in the parking lot. Um, and the potential to add EV because there are in the it's in the common. world there are EV fire engines. Uh, being developed and being used, so we d we definitely would want to make sure that we're prepared for the future because we know it's coming. Okay, cool. And then, Chief, on, in terms of the community engagement, it'd be nice to do a you know a, a neighborhood meeting, maybe either at the current twenty one, you know, because that's surrounded by the most in terms of residents. Or I don't know, maybe the church, you know, would give us something. To uh, in terms of meeting, how about the police station? Yeah, or the police station. We um, we would definitely do neighborhood meetings. That way, people can get involved. You know, ask questions. Kind of. Right. I mean, a lot of them have been to the open houses, so they know they're aware. They have. You know, of the age they and. Have. You know, we recognize that again. We we pride ourselves on being an integral part of the community. We're not going to do this in a vacuum. <laughs> right. Uh, we, right. We we definitely will involve our neighbors. Yeah, I think that'd be really appreciated. How do we go forward at this point? Yeah, so Dan, what do you need? Do you need motions? Do you have what you need in terms of? If you want to make a motion, that's fine. We're really, again, just looking for that direction to say, go ahead and put something together and bring it back to us. That That's really all we need. Yeah, what's your timeline to uh, turn something like that around? That's a, that's a good that's question. <laughs> um, there, obviously, there's a little bit of uh, planning, and we need to take a look at the finances. So um, we... We, we need a little bit of time to be able to, to put that together. From the consultant world, like how fast do you see municipalities turning around buildings like a 21 or a 22? So a couple, couple of years, what's what's the timeline from what you see out there in the greater part of the industry? Yeah, we're from a design standpoint, you're between six and 
12 months, depending on size, complexity. And then you're talking about 12 months to upwards of 18 months for construction. So we're looking at like 2025 for a new 21 or 22, depending on. Yeah. Okay. I will just say it never gets cheaper to build. Yeah. <laughs> no, we know that. Yeah. Yeah. She's mentioning the Streamwood one that just yeah. finished. And we did yeah. that one. I know about. Did you really? I know, yeah. a little bit about, I know a little bit about that one. What was the timeline of that one? Yeah, and the cost. Oh boy! Can you divulge? <laughs> um, no, it, it's somewhere in the twelve million for the project. Mm -hmm. I think, Chief, that's what you, you had construction, but those were project costs that we we had listed there. That's true. So that's construction. That's all engineering and mm -hmm. architecture fees and all you know furniture and IT. We we try to give you a complete project budget. Um, trust me, I've seen it too many times where, well, you told me it's 10 million. No, 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 look. So, um, so Streamwood is about 22,000 square feet mm. and it was, um, and that was built on, on site and they went to two of their other stations and that's how they, they solved that issue. Mm. Um, did they, I don't know if they had trailers there. I don't think, no. They, they did for the refurb on 33, but not for the headquarters. Yeah, not for the new headquarters. Gotcha. Um, and so we, we designed approximately eight months, and I think it was about 15 to build that one. So. Great. Great. Okay. Um, having no other questions, Paul, Brian, you're our building guys. You want to add anything? I don't want to put you on the spot. Any thoughts? The Yeah. Hey, Paul, yeah, come, yeah come on up to the mic. Up, yeah. Brian's kind of buried in the middle there. So, Just wanted to add a couple details. Uh, those buildings obviously are uninsulated, as was mentioned. Yeah. And um, yeah. from an energy standpoint, they're just, they were built when they didn't have energy codes pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And so we're going to make a fix of that. And so it will be much more comfortable in there for the, uh, for the guys as well. So, um, we think about the ADA uh, upgrades. Uh, ADA came out in 2009. These are built well before then. And so we have a lot of issues with ADA and uh, how to fix those things. We really can't. We have to rebuild in order to fix them all. Okay. No questions? No, thanks for weighing in. Anybody have any questions? Are you looking for a motion? Uh, we can make a motion. Or do you feel you've got enough uh, to go with? Dan? I, I, we're, we're fine with, with, with the discussion you've had because we're taking from this that you want us to go back and put something together for you. Yep. And if, if I'm off, please tell me. <laughs> no, I think you heard right. It's always good to look at figures. Anybody else? You guys came all the way over sitting in the back there. You want to weigh in? You're here. <laughs> we appreciate our firefighters being here. I mean, they, yeah. obviously they have a vested interest. Sure, in they got real skin in the game. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess All you're right. good. All right, you guys are good. All right, well, within that, we'll wrap up this agenda item. Um, Manager O'Malley and the team, Chief, thank you for all your hard work. Thanks for your consultants' work and all the uh, due diligence. Uh, we appreciate it. So with that, we'll roll on to the uh, information monthly reports. Uh, we're going to start with Health and Human Services Department monthly report. Any uh, questions or comments on that report? Dr. Speedra, anything to add? Okay, uh, thank you. That'll be received and filed. Uh, emergency Management Coordinator Monthly Report. Uh, anything to add? Okay, any Skip questions? the police. Oh, no, I'm, gonna, I'm going oh, okay. out of order on purpose. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold on. There's a method to my madness here. I want to read one of the letters in the uh, honor of my former chair, who I think would want this. Um, so there's a really nice letter uh, for the police. I just zoomed by it. Um, and it was the Chief Colley. Uh, I'm going to shorten it. I'm just going to start with the beginning and end with the end. But it's, uh, Dear Chief Colley, I'm writing to thank your agency and commend officers Rodney Penrod and Officer Brian O'Shea for assistance rendered for the Schomburg Police Department during the recent homicide investigation. Um, the outcome of this investigation resulted in the homicide offender being identified, located, and eventually surrendering without confrontation. This collaborative investigation resulted in the offender being charged with a homicide within days of the offense. All involved officers should be commended for their efforts in working together. 
I extend my sincere appreciation to you, Officer Penrod, Officer O'Shea, for the professionalism, uh, commitment, and assistance. The cooperation between departments proved invaluable. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, and that's from Brian Wolf, or I'm sorry, Bill Wolf, the chief of police over in Schomburg. So I uh, wanted to read that. Any other questions or comments about the police department monthly report? Chief, anything from you? All right. And then for the fire department monthly report, Chief, you want anything to add? Uh, I just I wanted to clarify. In the report, it talked about the firefighters and the donation of the smoke detector to a uh, hearing impaired person in our town. I was going to read that, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, but I just, I, you know, it, it wasn't just that they got the smoke alarms. Uh, the guys volunteered their time to go install them, and it was done per code, everything was good, but it, it meant a lot to the family, and it was a great representation of how our association of firefighters and uh, and they just they're part of the community and we really really appreciate that and could you explain because she's hearing impaired uh what they do to the bed to sure make it sure so there's a couple of things first of all as, as you all know from your own smoke detectors uh generally they sound an alarm to give you a notice that there's something going on in the home and you need to get out or at least need to investigate it uh obviously for those people that are deaf and, and hearing impaired they that doesn't help them because they don't hear the alarm so one of the things that the smoke detectors have is they have a flashing light and it's a pretty strong strobe so even if they're not really paying attention they're going to see and know that there's something going on and the second thing as you mentioned was there's a uh, connected to the system is a bed shaker so that if there's a fire uh, smoke alarm activation it causes the bed to shake and wakes the deaf person because obviously they wouldn't hear the alarm so um, it was it was really nice uh, again like I said the guys volunteer their time and the family was very appreciative in talking to the parents. They now, even though she's in high school, they always felt a little uncomfortable about leaving her home al alone um, because they just didn't know if she would get warned. And now they're very comfortable leaving her alone, and it's just kind of adding to the quality of life of one of our residents. And we really appreciate uh, the, the grant. We received a grant for the equipment, and the guys donated their time to install it. So, Thank you. Mayor? Well, I appreciate the guys doing that. I have a daughter who's deaf, and uh, we did have an alarm that would shake the bed when she had to get up, but they didn't have these smoke detectors like you described them in those days, and it would have been reassuring to have that. I understand the parents' concern because you're sleeping, you're in another room, somewhere in the basement, you know. Yeah, it's potentially it's a lifesaver. You know, Mayor, I was even thinking of, like, my son Joshua with a cognitive disability. That would be beneficial. Yeah. So maybe there's something to be had there. Um, but thank you guys for and gals for doing that. Much appreciated. Uh, any other comments about the Fire Department monthly report? All right, have none. That will be received and filed. Uh, President's report, Mayor, anything else? Nothing else, Trustee Palavis. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything in other? I don't think so. Uh, no items in review, and I will entertain a motion to second to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Thanks. Have a good evening.